today's episode is about tracking down the exact Pokemon you're looking for. But first, I think it's time for a haircut. Much better. What's up trainers? I'm here at the park and I realized a lot of you don't know my name. I'm Nick and I'm here training this gym up where my dude SDCB is holding it down for Team Instinct with a 2300 CP Dragonite. So SDCB, if you're watching, I see you. I'm using my Vaporeon, which during yesterday's research, I found out has perfect IVs, so I'm pretty stoked about that. It also has the ideal moveset, water gun, and water pulse, so this is pretty much a perfect Vaporeon. You'll notice that sometimes when I dodge, I still take a little bit of damage. That's because each move has a timing window. So you can dodge. If you dodge at the right time, you'll avoid all of the damage, but if you dodge a little early or a little late, you'll still take a little bit of damage. Let's see if I can make it through this Gyarados. That's, that's a lot of damage. Dodged that one. Oh, come on, come on. Yes. All right, I'm definitely not gonna get past the Snorlax, so I'm out. There it is, plus 560 prestige, a little bit of experience. I'm gonna go ahead and finish training this up to level six so I can leave a Pokemon here. But after that, we're gonna talk about tracking down Pokemon that you're looking for. I just wanna mention, I don't actually listen to Chelsea Grin. I borrowed that shirt from my girlfriend who actually doesn't listen to Chelsea Grin either. Anyway, back to the episode. Let's get to the meat of today's topic. Finding Pokemon you're looking for. With 151 different species, it's hard to know where to look. But there are quite a few tools and sites that you can use to make your search a little bit easier. When you're just starting your search and you have no idea where to begin, I recommend the Silph Roads web app. If you're not familiar with the Silph Road, I really suggest you check them out on Reddit. It started out as a network to plan trades in Pokemon Go, but it's grown so much beyond that. They've created a web app that encompasses a ton of different tools related to Pokemon Go. The one I'm recommending here is the Global Pokédex. The web app has limited access right now, but if you go check out the subreddit, they're giving away some access codes over the next few days. They're planning to release the app on native platforms, meaning Android and iOS, soon, so once that happens, they'll be public and available for everyone to use. The Silph Global Pokédex allows users to report sightings of Pokemon they've encountered. The reason I recommend this over any other crowdsourced Pokemon map is because the Silph Research team is doing a lot with the information you submit. Not only does the app record the location where you found the Pokemon, it also takes into account things like type of terrain, weather, time of day, even moon phase. The Silph Research team then uses this data to get a better idea of how spawns work in Pokemon Go. They actually did a video about their findings from the beta test and it's on their YouTube channel which I've linked to in the description. Now let's talk about using the Pokedex to find a Pokemon you're looking for. First, you're gonna choose the species. I'm looking for Onyx today. Beyond just a map, the app gives you a ton of useful information, including typing, base stats, possible movesets, and even the different CP levels that trainers have encountered the Pokemon at in the wild. When you expand the map, you can zoom in or out to find more specific locations for the Pokemon. I'll be honest with you guys, I checked the map before I chose this park, so I know that some Onyx have been sighted here. So, now that you know where you should be looking for the Pokemon, let's talk about how to find it once you get there. For this, you're going to want to use a site called Pokevision.com. Pokevision uses Niantic's API to track the exact location of nearby Pokemon. It also gives you a timer for how long they'll be there until they despawn. To be honest, I'm not sure how I feel about this kind of service, and I'm actually not using Pokevision myself. But, until Niantic resolves the three footstep issue, I think this is a perfectly acceptable way to track down Pokemon. So to use Pokevision, you can either enter an address or use your location. Once the site has your location, it'll show you nearby Pokemon on the map. Zooming in, I can see there is in fact an Onyx, and it's right across the street. I've only got about seven minutes to find it, so let's go see if we can do that. So with my app open, I can see that there is an Onyx right here, but it's not the one that Pokevision showed me. So we know that Pokevision doesn't show all the Pokemon that are nearby but we're not sure how it determines which ones to show you. Since what we're really testing here is whether or not Pokevision's accurate, I'm gonna ignore that onyx and head over to the spot where it showed me there should be one. All 
All right, here it is, right where it said it would be. So that's it for today. To review, we learned how to find out where a species of Pokemon has been sighted, and how to track it down exactly once you get to that location. I'll put links for everything we talked about in the description below, and as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. First thing we need to do, test out the series, capture a bunch of Pokemon. It's Sunday afternoon, and all the Pokestops seem to have lures activated. We're also gonna compare Pokemon hatched from eggs and caught with incense, so to do that, we're also gonna need to do a bunch of walking. All right, Pier Point Landing. This is the spot we're gonna post up here with everyone else because it's in range of three different lures. 